What if I told you that skipping flossing could do more than just giving you cavities and bad breath? Scientists are actually finding a new discovery linking the bacteria that live in your mouth to Alzheimer's disease. Yep, turns out that neglecting your gums might not just cost you that date could cost you your memory too. So how could this happen? Well, Alzheimer's disease is still one of the world's biggest mysteries. There has been a ton of research that's gone into it, but we still just don't know a whole lot. But what scientists are finding is that a specific bacteria that lives in your mouth is linked to be found in the brains of people that have Alzheimer's. So how can these mouth bacteria affect your brain? Well, the mouth has over 700 different species of bacteria. Some of these are good and some of these are bad. When you have gum disease, things like gingivitis or periodontitis, there are a ton of these bad bacteria. Now specifically, one of these bad bacteria is called Pariforomonas gingivalis or P. gingivalis for short. Now this particular bacteria can enter your bloodstream. Now, any of these bacteria can actually enter your bloodstream, like when you have bleeding gums, you have a lot of gum inflammation, these bacteria that are involved in this gum disease can enter your bloodstream. But this specific one is the one that's found in the brains of people with Alzheimer's. How does this work? Well, it's thought that these bacteria can travel through the bloodstream, or they can hijack the cranial nerves and travel through the brain that way. So basically, these bacteria are treating your bloodstream like an Uber ride, and these bacteria are the passengers. And this destination is going straight to your brain. But the only difference is instead of giving that Uber driver a tip, they're just leaving a ton of inflammation around in the brain. Now what is a mechanism, like what's thought that this P. gingivalis bacteria does to your brain? These bacteria will release something called gingipanes. These are toxic enzymes that damage neurons and actually trigger the brain's defense system. The brain responds by actually trying to protect itself. It does this by producing something called amyloid beta. The problem is these amyloid proteins that the brain produces doesn't just protect itself, it actually also damages neurons. Now these amyloid plaques are also thought to play a big role in Alzheimer's. And actually one of the biggest characteristics of Alzheimer's patients is having these amyloid proteins in their brain. Now the other problem with gum disease is the inflammation it causes. Gum disease causes a chronic low-grade inflammation in your body. Essentially you get these bacteria, these bad bacteria that go underneath your gums and they cause this inflammation that comes from your body because your body senses that something is wrong with your gums. These bacteria are basically attacking your gums and your body is trying to protect itself. So this is why you get these bleeding gums. But it doesn't just stop there, it can spread to the rest of your body. Inflammation is also one of the major drivers of Alzheimer's because when you have this immune system responding, there's basically a war going on. When you have a war, both sides are gonna take casualties, and this war is going on inside your body. So you have these bacteria that are attacking things in your body, then you have your own immune system that can also start to attack its own body. And like I said, Alzheimer's, there's a lot that we don't know. Some people even think that it could be an autoimmune issue as well. And the thought is that when your body is responding to this inflammation, it starts to attack its own brain nerve cells. And what does this lead to? Again, at least a direct neuronal damage or attacking your brain, which is gonna to lead to cognitive issues. Now luckily, your brain has a defense system. It's called the blood-brain barrier. So when your blood is taking things to your brain, your brain knows that this is a very important part of the body. So we're gonna weed out things. It's kinda of like a bodyguard or a bouncer that's only letting certain things into the brain. But studies show that inflammation in the body can weaken this blood-brain barrier. Too much inflammation is never gonna be good. This in turn can allow these harmful substances to enter the brain a lot easier. And once this blood-brain barrier can get compromised, then all sorts of things can enter the brain and lead to more damage. Now you can see how having an unhealthy mouth can start to affect the rest of your body. Not just your brain, but other parts too. For example, your heart. Gum disease increases your risk of getting heart attacks and strokes. And the bacteria in your mouth can also lead to plaque building up in your arteries. Now this in turn can again affect your brain. Why? Because now you have less blood flow. And this blood flow is what carries all the oxygen and nutrients to all of your organs. One of those organs, again, is your brain. So if your brain isn't getting enough oxygen and nutrients, again, it can lead to something called dementia. Specifically, in this case, vascular dementia, which is basically you're not getting enough nutrients or oxygen, and then it's another way 
that you're gonna have this cognitive decline. So it's essentially all a big domino effect. There's multiple different factors that are all going into a disease like Alzheimer's. The bacteria in your mouth is just one part of it, but it can kind of cascade and start that domino effect. You have these bleeding gums, these bacteria get into your bloodstream, this causes a lot more inflammation, these bacteria can enter your brain and cause all sorts of havoc once it's there. And even when the brain tries to defend itself, it can make these amyloid plaques, but these amyloid plaques, again, can do even more damage, and it's a big characteristic of Alzheimer's patients. Now, am I saying that 100% of Alzheimer's is caused by gum disease? No, because even these amyloid plaques aren't in every Alzheimer's patient. It's probably in like 60% of patients that have Alzheimer's, but what about the other 40%? Like I said, there is a lot we do not know about Alzheimer's. But if we are finding a link between the bacteria in your mouth and the same bacteria that can get in your brain during Alzheimer's, then we probably want to address that. So how can you protect yourself? Number one is gonna be prioritizing your oral hygiene. This is probably the most basic thing, but simply brushing twice a day and flossing every day are gonna be some of the easiest things. Flossing is probably the best way to prevent gum disease. Now, if you wanna get really fancy, you can also add a water flosser. Water flosser is basically this thing that shoots out water. It like pulses and it shoots in between your teeth and underneath your gum. So if you ever have any plaque or food particles that's stuck there, it's really good at flushing it out. But flossing is good because it's actual like mechanically removing the food. So water flosser is kind of like flushing it out like fire hose and the flosser is basically scraping that plaque off your teeth and underneath your gums. Now, if you don't floss because your gums are bleeding, then that's kind of like saying, I don't wash my hands because my hands get wet. When your gums bleed, it's a sign that you need to floss more. It's a sign that you have gum disease and that there's this inflammation going on. And what you need to do is actually clean that all away so that bleeding can eventually stop. If you keep this flossing up for like a couple weeks, eventually you'll notice that that bleeding really comes down. Now step number two is to really focus on your diet. You wanna reduce anything that feeds the bad bacteria in your mouth. It's essentially gonna be any refined grains or processed sugars. And you wanna to start to add some anti-inflammatory foods. So things like leafy greens, berries, and even fatty fish is a good one. And you also wanna make water your best friend. You wanna avoid those acidic drinks and you wanna avoid any sugary drinks because the acid and the sugars are gonna be really damaging to your mouth. So you wanna to try to limit that to maybe 10% of your diet and the other 90% to stick with water. Step number three is to get dental checkups. You have to go to your dentist every six months. This is gonna be the only way you can really detect if you have signs of gum disease or even early signs of gum disease because they'll be checking your gums, they'll be measuring your pockets, they'll be cleaning your teeth, and be taking x-rays, they'll be doing all these things to basically prevent you from going and progressing. Now, number four, another thing that can help is just to reduce inflammation throughout your body. You know, we always hear that inflammation is always bad. Well, it's not that inflammation is bad, it's having too much inflammation. Anybody has inflammation at any time. Inflammation is actually good, but you wanna make sure you have the right dose of it. As soon as you get gum disease, then you know you have too much inflammation and you need to control that. So what are other things that can help? Well, things like exercise can help and in general, it can reduce the brain inflammation. Managing your stress levels is one because when you have increased cortisol, then it can weaken your immune system. So finding some stress relief like meditation or going to the sauna or exercising again and then prioritizing good sleep. Now, I could talk for hours about how important sleep is and specifically how poor sleep can lead to other diseases, including Alzheimer's. But I did make a lot of other content on sleep specifically, so check out the description below where I made some other content about it. And the last thing is to start working on it as early as possible. We often think that diseases like Alzheimer's are just a natural part of aging. But what science is showing is that your daily habits, especially from a young age, can really play a role in how your brain develops later on in life and can even prevent things like Alzheimer's. And one of the simplest things you can do is to simply keep your mouth healthy. It's literally going to take like two and a half minutes every morning and every night. Now with that being said, thank you guys for watching. I hope you liked that video. If you haven't already, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel below and I will see you in the next video. What if you could regrow a missing tooth just like a shark? Well, scientists in Japan might have the exact answer to that. And human trials are already being done. So there was a breakthrough discovery involving a protein called the USAG1 protein and also BMPs or bone morphogenetic protein.